The following commentary contains excerpts from Foster Ray Dulles' America Learns to Play, A History of Popular Recreation, copyright 1940, published by Peter Smith. Though the early period of automobiling coincided so exactly with the years of the Nickelodeon madness, the automobile in the movies reached entirely different groups of people. The first decade of the century witnessed a remarkable expansion in these two new forms of amusement. But it was then impossible to foresee that higher standards of entertainment would soon draw all classes of society into the moving picture theaters and that the reduced costs of operating an automobile would in time enable all the world to motor. The moving picture attempted to tell a story and the success of the experiment was so immediate that every producer turned to one real thrillers. By 1914, the motor car had passed well beyond its pioneer stage. There were some two million in the country and mass production was enabling the manufacturer to turn out cars that could be purchased for as little as $400. By the 1920s, the automobile had been so greatly improved that constant breakdowns were no longer the invariable rule of the road and it was possible to operate a car without the prohibitive expenses of earlier days. It was not until after 1920 that the movies and motoring could be grouped together as popular forms of recreation. The retrospective modern moviegoer would still have felt something strangely lacking. There was no romance, no sex interest. It took time to adapt the formula of boy meets girl to the screen, but when the motion pictures had once discovered love, they clung to it. All its various themes were developed, love as sentiment and love as biological instinct. Further triumphs awaited the all-dialogue pictures, produced as quickly as the necessary equipment could be obtained. As theaters throughout the country were wired for sound, the talkies whipped up popular appetite for the movies as never before. The industry's annual receipts rose between 1927 and 1929 to the tremendous total of a billion dollars, and weekly attendance jumped to an estimated 110 million, the equivalent of four-fifths of the entire population, going to a show once a week throughout the entire year. For countless millions, the automobile opened up the way for holiday picnics in the country and for weekend excursions to fish or hunt. It immensely stimulated the whole outdoor movement, making camping possible for throngs of city dwellers, while the reverse was often true for the countrified citizens. The farmer who could drive to town every week and see a motion picture no longer looked forward to the circus and the country fair with the eager anticipation of the day when they represented his one taste of urban entertainment. The movies had become a national habit from which no element in the population was wholly free. Their effect on social life, the home, family relationships, children, was incalculable. In 1935, the American people were reported to have spent almost 5% of their total income on vacation expenses. More than half this money, or about $1.3 billion, represented automobile operating expenses that could be fairly allocated to the pleasure use of cars. Here was a sum greater than all moving picture admissions, greater than the cost of any other form of recreation whatsoever. Add to it all the other expenses of motoring, hotels, tourist camps, restaurants, and some idea may be gained of the importance 
of the industry that catered to the motorists' needs. I'm Gary O'Shea. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please like and share. And now our engine rever, beautiful Toby Wing.